morning everyone it is monday may 2nd and we just got to icon as usual sitting in the courtyard waiting for icon to open we had an absolute blast on saturday night we went out to the debut headlining show of singer songwriter halion and it was absolutely amazing one of the first edm singer songwriter headlining tours and she absolutely killed it direct support for her was an artist called amity and he's actually an icon grad and he was doing live singing, live performing as well. I was absolutely blown away by these two and the night was amazing. I got to actually meet a lot of people I've only ever talked to online and so it was a successful networking event and also just an amazing event to attend and support these vocalists doing their thing. I do have some footage from the night so check that out. Yeah, so you know the routine by now. Monday, Thursday, Saturday, no classes. Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday classes. Friday is only a half day anyways. So yeah, today we are finishing off our vocal production homework, and then we are just working on collabs, working on originals for the rest of the day. We also need to do some grocery shopping. We need to do a whole bunch of stuff. Once we get in the studio, I'll definitely show you what we've been doing for our vocal production homework. Anyways, I don't have much to say this morning, so I'm gonna drink my coffee, eat my breakfast and then head into Icon. All right, here we are in Ableton, and I just wanted to show you a little bit about my advanced vocal production homework. So essentially, we were supposed to start utilizing effects to create a clean vocal. So that includes EQ, compression, delay, reverb, panning, leveling, and all that kind of good stuff. So I actually went through and meticulously cleaned every single vocal, made sure that all the fades were on there nicely, even all these different layers. So let's check out the main section. So I did all those vocal throws using reverb, really cleaned everything up, tried my best to process it all. I think it sounds clean, balanced, and nice. This vocal didn't really need any pitch or timing correction, which is a nice change of pace, because I know we'll be doing a lot of that during this course. Last week and this week is part one and two of vocal effects and processing, so I'm excited to see what we learn on Wednesday. Good morning, everyone. It is Tuesday, May 3rd, and we're actually at Studio 166. Behind this curtain here is where I was recording Brittany last week in the vlog. Right now we are working on our mastering assignment. We kind of low-key almost forgot to do this one, but we're reminded yesterday by our good buddy Charlie. Obviously the assignment piggybacks off of the lesson and this one was all about imaging. And so they've given us a track that essentially almost has no side information and they want us to utilize the tools that we went over to basically enhance the side information in the drops, in the choruses. We are working away at this assignment and we've done the correction phase of the mastering process. Take a look. These are all the tools that I used for the correction phase of this master. Essentially what I did is if you right click here, you can actually flip this between stereo pan mode like so. Pretty handy if you ask me. And then you can control the mono field using panning. And so what they've essentially asked us to do is make this nice and wide in the drops. This will actually be interesting because I think my computer records in mono. So let's see if it actually just does sound bigger. This isn't chasing loudness here. This is chasing a bigger feel to the track. I see all the signs. Just 
To me, that's sounding a little better. I mean, overall, there's actually not that much stereo content anyways. And without altering the track too much by adding like reverbs or delays or things like that, that's gonna cause potential phasing issues. We try to enhance that side information and make it kind of sparkle a little more. And that's essentially what mastering is. We are solving a problem. We are figuring out a puzzle. And in this situation, we needed to enhance that stereo image. I think we've done a pretty good job in the correction phase. And now we move on to the control phase. Remember, no more mastering chains. We think about this from a correction, control, enhancement, and finalization perspective. Good evening. It's a little while after my mentor session, and we're here to recap our long day, which is Tuesday. So first up, we had advanced mastering theory, and this was all about tools for loudness control. There's a few different kinds of limiters slash maximizers. There's Tonal, transparent, aggressive, and multiband. Now, as I've expressed before, the theme for this advanced course is the right tool for the right job. Not necessarily grabbing the one limiter and slapping that on there. There are different masters for different genres, different jobs, everything like that. And so other things we talked about are the different streaming platforms and what different LUFs, AKA loudness units full scale, each streaming platform uses. Funny thing is, Spotify actually doesn't have lossless audio. They're actually lagging behind Apple Music and Tidal. We also talked about something called true peak limiting. And essentially what a limiter will do is like chop off the audio once it reaches a certain point. With true peak on, it'll actually push the audio down back to zero. So that's something you wanna turn on on your limiter when you're finalizing your master. All right, moving on to advanced mixing class. And this time we are doing synth pop. This is part one of two. And essentially it's the same as the last couple weeks when we were doing indie rock. We need to get a rough mix this week. And then next week we'll go in and do all the final touches. The interesting kind of curveball they're throwing us is this time we're getting like mock requests from our client. And so when you're mixing somebody else's track or mastering somebody else's track, sometimes you do get the oddest requests. The instructors have told me like some of the craziest stuff they've been told, like somebody will say, oh, I want the piano to sound dreamier. And you're just supposed to know what that means. You know, does that mean throw a lot of reverb on it? Does that mean push it to the back? Does that mean thin it out? You know, there's so many different options you could do to mix it or to sit it in the master in a way that would make it dreamy. And so we've got a list of things that they want us to do. It's not quite as oddball as that, but now we actually have to really pay attention to what the client wants. At first I was like a little iffy about this class because it's mixing all these different genres, but what's really cool about this class is our instructor is essentially mixing these tracks prior to the class. So he mixes it on his own time, pretty much follows the lesson, but puts his own spin on things and then shows us and gives us a full detailed breakdown of everything that he did and why. So it's really, really, really insightful. You get to actually watch their process and ask any questions you want. We only have a class of five, so we're allowed to ask as many questions as possible. Pretty freaking successful day. We'll see you tomorrow. Good morning, everyone. It is Thursday. May 5th, we totally bailed on yesterday. I don't know, it's just, we got in the studio and things were just flowing. You know, when you get in that flow state, it's almost impossible to break out and think or do of any other responsibility or thing that you got going on outside of that moment. Let's give a quick recap of our classes from Wednesday. So we had advanced mastering practical in the mastering studio. And this time we were learning how to clip our tracks. So for people that don't know, when you master track, you master it to zero, but you can actually push it beyond that even though it technically isn't. And so what you get is a bit of a distorted sound, but if you push it to the limits and you kind of just go to the distortion and then pull it back, you can actually achieve something that sounds really, really loud. So that was really cool to learn and to do that on the hardware, not software. Then we had advanced vocal production where the instructor was going over some of our homework. I showed you the track that we were working on that was supposed to be a part one of two 
two, but the instructor kind of threw us a curveball and said, no, we're done with that track. I'm going to send you a different one that I essentially want you to do what we're learning with this effects processing, but I want you to completely treat this as if you just received this vocal and now you are the vocal engineer and you need to comp, edit, effect, compress, pitch correct, time correct, do the whole nine yards. Basically, the entire class was going over out of the box unique techniques to affect your vocals. She showed us some really, really interesting effects with a whole bunch of different plugins, how to like chop it up and do some stutter effects manually with the audio. A lot of this stuff, if I'm honest, I've done before, but it's also just good to like reinforce the stuff that I'm doing. I don't know, sometimes as a music producer, I just kind of lack confidence in what I'm doing because I think I'm not doing it right. And so a lot of this experimentation, a lot of this kind of extra stuff and watching someone like our vocal production teacher do these effects and show us even beyond that, it was really, really awesome. I was actually talking to a friend yesterday. I was helping him master a bunch of stuff and like it just all of a sudden dawned on me that I actually do feel confident in what I'm doing. Doing. And that was kind of the whole reason I chose to go to Icon. All in all, a really good day yesterday. Today, we're just going to concentrate on all of our homework, maybe dive into our secret project, do some stuff for our mentor sessions, and just kind of vibe out all day. We also have to go grocery shopping and all that boring stuff. We're going to get started. We'll talk to you probably soon. I don't know. I'm kind of dropping the ball with this vlog thing. Good morning, everyone. It is Friday, May 6th, and we're going to get one of these mornings right. So here we are are in the courtyard drinking our coffee before icon opens today of course we have advanced sound design and i'm absolutely loving this course tons and tons of experimental sound design and this is the kind of stuff that's going to set your music apart all these little practices that result in something that you could have never thought of on your own is the key for me once you experiment and you find a process that works then you can repeat it and then as time goes on your sound will evolve into what is your sound I strongly believe that someone's sound can't be manufactured. It's easy to make a certain genre, but what actually sounds like elated is a totally different story. Today also our collaborator, once again, Brittany Egbert, she's coming to the studio and I'm super, super psyched to continue on with the work that we've been doing. Also, we have another Q&A coming up at five o'clock. But yeah, this morning we're just jumping into some studio time. Probably gonna work on the vocal comping that Brittany and I have done in our previous sessions to get ready for the ones coming up today. Look, there's a hummingbird. There's a little hummingbird floating right in front of me at this tree. Oh, there it goes. Pretty freaking cool. Good evening. It's Friday still. We just had Pizza Friday. Earlier this afternoon, we worked with Brittany Egbert on a bunch of new collaborations. Officially, I think we have four right now. Let's recap our advanced sound design class. This was a particularly interesting class because we talked a lot about hardware and how to resample hardware using other instruments. So one of the videos that was brought up was a guitar being put through a Moog grandmother synthesizer. Synthesizer. The person was able to use pretty much all the effects of the synthesizer, but play the guitar through it, kind of like a guitar pedal. Another thing they showed us was like a tape recorder. You could plug instruments and microphones and things like that into this and then record straight to tape and then play that back. I've never really thought of tape, like a cassette tape, to be any sort of special sound from back in the day, but there's definitely a lot of plugins that emulate it, and tape does just have a unique quality to it. A lot of lo-fi records are using tape effects nowadays. I'm not sure what I'm going to do for the homework, but we are technically supposed to use a piece of hardware and record that. I know that my roommate has a synthesizer, so I just might use that. I don't know, though. We also have to study for two midterms coming up next week. Luckily, not all of our classes have a midterm. Sound design, as well as mastering, has a midterm coming up next week. 
all in all, a super busy but super successful day. Absolutely love sound design. But yeah, just jumped into one of the classrooms here so I could give you a little recap of everything that went on today. Of course, tomorrow's Saturday. Icon's open from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. We'll be here most of the day working on all of our homework. We'll talk to you then. Good morning. It is Saturday, May 7th. We just got into Icon. It's around 10 p.m. Got a little bit of a sleep in. As I said, Icon's open from 10 to 6 on Saturday, closed on Sunday, and the rest of the week, 9 a.m. to midnight. I think this morning we really need to jump into our advanced vocal production homework. We kind of got assigned like a rogue assignment. So I got to check this out and see what's going on. We also need to get a rough mix of our hyper pop mixing assignment. And this time we got to include some effects on some sends. So some reverb, delay, all that good stuff. Make sure we get the leveling right. And then, yeah, we're pretty much going to try to book studio all day with the exception of lunch and just work on the homework. I'll probably show you a couple clips as the day goes on just of what I'm doing so you can actually see the things that I talk about. And yeah, we're gonna keep it short and sweet, finish our coffee and get to work. Saturday around 5.22 p.m. and we have been working like a madman all day. We're gonna jump into the computer and I'm gonna show you what I've been working on for advanced vocal production as well as advanced mixing. So we've imported approximately 50 stems for this track. So here we have the vocal as the first one, quite a few layers going on there. Next up we have percussion, lots going on there. Bass, not so much, pretty simple. Quite a few synths, nice little guitar section, and then a bunch of effects at the end. And so it definitely did not look this organized when I dropped it in. They essentially just gave us the raw stems, we throw it in the session, and then we have to go in and organize everything. I'll probably get copyright for this, but hopefully it doesn't block the video. If it does, I may have to make this entire section silent, which will suck. I don't want to bring you closer. I can't push you away. I wish I could be sober, but she exposed me while she hides her face. We've got a ton going on here. Realistically, a lot of people overcomplicate these crucial steps to a mix. Your panning, your overall levels, all your levels down here and doing a basic mix. So what I did is I grouped everything, got it all organized, I started with my vocals. From my vocals, I moved on to my percussion and then my bass. And then I actually went down to my guitars and then I came back to my synths. And then I'd done a little bit with the effects, but they weren't too bad to begin with. And so it's meticulously listening, going back to the reference tracks. So they have a rough mix of this new version that they've sent me that they want finalized by me, the mixing engineer. And then they have a reference to what it was mixed to a previous revision and then they have a reference track which is blinding lights by the weekend kind of wishful thinking in this scenario if I'm honest so as far as getting a rough mix down I think we've nailed it So that was our mixing assignment. This is our vocal production assignment. And well, there was about 50 tracks total in the mixing assignment. There are 50 vocal layers well, I guess maybe about 45 vocal layers total just in this vocal production session. These ones were somewhat organized when we got them, thankfully. Got an organized vocalist here, properly labeling and color coding everything. But we still need to go through and meticulously, as you can see here, we've gone through and separated, we've taken out certain breaths, we've taken out pops and clicks, similarly to here, and this is how meticulous you have to be for a professional level vocal. And so once again, we go through, we start leveling things, we do a basic mix using our gain, and then we start panning stuff, and then we start adding effects. Take a listen. Lord, I need your strength. Funny thing is, I've actually heard this song. This song is heavily featured in the mixing stage for the online program, where we mixed, I think it was the drums and the bass and the whole instrumental. Now I'm mixing the vocal of that track. So I actually know this track quite well. 
which is pretty cool. And so yeah, if we come down to this section here, let me solo it, take a listen. Lord, I need your strength, cause he's got no place to sleep. They've got him begging on sidewalks. So the critical thing for this is that the vocalist needs to really nail the timing for all these layers. If not, as an engineer, you need to go in and you need to manually adjust the layers or use a program like Vocaline to make sure everything lines up perfectly. But they start at just a slightly different place each time, you're gonna get a stutter effect and it's not gonna sound professional. We've got these leveled, we've got some effects going on and we've got panning. Let's check this out with the whole track. Lord, I need your strength cause he's got no place to sleep. They got him begging on sidewalks, breaking my heart to watch. Those ad-libs are probably too loud actually. Sim very similar to mixing, but I feel there's a lot more precision when it comes down to processing vocals. Some heavy duty projects going on, that's for sure. This wasn't even the vocal project that we were supposed to be doing. And this is twice as much vocal content as we had in the previous track. Coming from the online program, I'm about halfway done and I'm only doing a small portion of the advanced program. This is a huge step up from the online program, that's for sure. I am absolutely loving this program so far. A lot of freaking work but so, so worth it. I'm in the middle of it right now, but I can guarantee you, once I get home, get into my own studio, and I start working away, so much of this is gonna make even more sense as time goes on. I'm gonna say in this video, I truly think that Icon should keep this grad bundle program open, or at least running once or twice a year for online students to come to LA and take these courses. This to me would be the icing on the cake for any online grad who couldn't do the in-house LA program. All right, we've got midterms coming up next week. Can't believe we're halfway done. We'll talk to you soon.